Sawete, welcome to this video lesson on Fabulae Surai. We're looking at the Fabulae Surai that goes to chapter 26 of Lingua Latina Per Se Illustrata. Uh, each of these will have five stories that are myths or legends, typically, um, that are meant to pair along with the reading level of the main textbook at that chapter. So this is to pair up with chapter 26 of the main book. So if you haven't gotten there yet, you need to get there before you're really ready for these chapters um, or these additional stories, I should say. All right, Pygmalion. Pygmalion, um, this myth is the myth of Pygmalion and Galatea. Galatea, G-A-L-A-T-E-A. I don't know why her name isn't mentioned, but she is the statue who uh, Pygmalion makes, and then she comes to life in the context of the story, a little bit like Pinocchio, or you might know the musical My Fair Lady or something like that. He falls in love with the statue he's made, Galatea, and then he prays and she comes to life. Right, here we go. Pygmalion vir graecus fuit. Pygmalion was a Greek man. Qui magnam pecuniam multos amicos, multos servos habebat. Who had big money, in other words, a lot of money, uh, many friends and many slaves. Fame in asuero, quas superbas esiputabat, nulla samabat. But as for women, whom he thought were haughty, superbas, arrogant, we could also say, he loved none of them. Nulla samabat. Pygmalion arte sua multas res mirables confecerat. Pygmalion, by the means of his art, had made, confecerat, many wonderful things. Quas plurimi homines valde admirabantur, which very many people very much admired. Okay, plurimi is the superlative of multi, so very many. And walde is from walidus, uh, literally it means strongly, but it's often used in a way that we would just say very in English. So which very many people strongly or greatly admired, wondered at. So his statues were awesome. Quotidie, daily, enim, indeed. Pulcherima signa ex marmore uh, faciebat. He made very beautiful statues. Now signa elsewhere can mean signs. Uh, but here it's specifically as statues from marble, ex marmore. He made most beautiful statues from marble. Quae tamen non signa sed homines vivi esse videbantur, which nevertheless seemed not to be statues, signa, but living human beings, homines vivi. Saipe Pygmalion, quiwe sinta bernam sua mocabat, often Pygmalion called his um, citizens into his shop, pulcherima illa signa ostendens, showing them those most beautiful statues. Venete ad spectandum aiebat. He said, come to look, viri et feminae, men and women. Pulcra haec signa aspicite, look at these beautiful statues. Admiramini, membra, manus, pedes, brachia, crura, cola, ora, quae artem meam mobis demonstrant. Admire or look at in amazement, uh, look in amazement at the membra, the limbs, the hands, the feet, the arms, the legs, the necks, the mouths, or we could also say faces, which show my art, my skill to you all, wobis. Nam arte mea, for by my art, by my skill, natura ipsam imitatus sum, I have imitated nature herself. Quae vivere me is insignis videtur. Nature who, quae, seems to live, to be alive, vivere, in my statues. Now, I don't know about you, but I have always noticed that when he, according to this version, he thinks that women are haughty or superbus, uh, super by, I guess, in the feminine plural. He's the one that is actually being haughty here. Viri Graeci, Greek men, et feminae Graecae, and Greek women, ad pygmaliones tabernam accidentes, approaching or coming to, arriving at um, Pygmalion's shop, 
Cupidissimi errant signa spectandi were very desirous of looking at the statues, corum pulcritudinem omni modo laudabant, whose beauty they praised in every way. O Pygmalion ayebant, O Pygmalion, they would say, they used to say. Quam pulcra haec signa sunt, how beautiful these statues are. Natura enim non solum imitatus es, for you have not only imitated nature, seretiam superavisti, but you have even surpassed it, you have excelled it, that is to say, done better. Omnes delectabantur, spectando illa signa, they were all delighted uh, in looking at those statues, or by looking at those statues. Mirabilia exempla, wonderful examples, novissimae artis, of his most novel or most strange uh, skill. So novus means new, but it can mean novel or strange. That is something you've never seen before, and that's kind of the force of it here. Tandem, at last, it's a synonym of postremo and demum denique. Pygmalion formosissimae puellae signum confecit. Pygmalion made a statue, signum, of a most beautiful girl. Quae aureum capillum, caruleus oculos, rubra labra habebat, who had golden hair, blue eyes, red lips. Cuius signi amori captus, captivated by the love of which statue, so again he fell in love with his own statue, Pygmalion miserimus factus erat, Pygmalion had become or had been made very sad, very miserable. Et nocte pessime dormiebat, and at night he slept very badly. Pessime, again a superlative. We've got a lot of those in this chapter. Dolebat anim signum, quam quam vera atque pulcherima puella esse videbatur non vivere. For he was um, sad or he grieved that the statue although it seemed to be a true and most beautiful girl, was not living, known we were. So, wera in this story, usually that is translated as true, but here you might want to say real, right? It seemed to be, although it seemed to be a real and most beautiful girl, it was not living, right? Neque sibi respondere amorem suum fatenti nor was it able to respond to him uh, confessing his own love. So apparently he used to talk to the statue. Not only is he haughty, but he's a little bit crazy. That's okay. Co tidie itique, and so daily, Pygmalion qui cupido serat, who was desirous, eam puellam, wiwam aspiciendi, of looking upon that girl alive, we wam here is the uh, adjective from wewus. Deorum templa adire solebat, who was accustomed to go to the temples of the gods, ad sacrificandum, to sacrifice, that's a ger gerund phrase there, et deos deasque orabat, and he used to pray to or beg the gods and goddesses. Sperabat anem, Flendo se deorum animos molire pose, for he hoped, sperabaranem, that by crying he could soften the minds of the gods. Nequenim quisquam nisi deus illisigno vitam dare poterat, for nor indeed could anyone, except for a god, nisi deus, um, give life to that statue. Olem Postquam domum rediet, once or one day after he returned home, in cabiculum and trawit, he entered into his bedroom, ubi pulcherimum illud puellae signum posuerat, where he had placed posuerat, that most beautiful statue of the girl. Nullum tamen signum widit. Nevertheless, tamen, he saw no statue. Alequim igitur. Ilud obstulisse putawit. Therefore, he thought, putawit, that someone, aliquim, 
had stolen that, meaning had stolen the statue. Atque considens, and sitting down, do you flay wit, he cried for a long time. Subito tamen, suddenly, however, suddenly nevertheless, formosissima femina ad eo macesit, a most beautiful woman approached him, came to him. Quae aureos capillos, caroleos oculos, labra rubra habebat, who had golden hairs or locks, we could say, uh, blue eyes and red lips. Hmm. Wasn't that what the statue looked like? Quae pigmalione excella sua surginti, who to uh, Pygmalion getting up from his chair, and we can understand the inquit from below, says, No nyam signum sed puella vera sum. I am no longer, or not now, a statue, but a real girl. Which should remind you a bit of Pinocchio. I'm a real boy now. Right. Pygmalion tersit lacrimas. Pygmalion wiped his tears. Et laetissimus puellam complexus. And very happy, he embraced, or having embraced the girl, osculatus est. He kissed her. Okay. Post brevissimum vero tempus, eiam puellam uxorem duxit. After, but after the shortest time, he, uh, literally, he led that girl as wife. Um, this is a little bit like the idiom to take somebody as husband or wife in English. Basically means he married her a little bit later. All right. Now, that is a little bit weird. It's weird making somebody something that you then fall in love with and, you know, marry and all of that. So a little bit of creepiness to that, especially in depending on how you view the reference to her as a puella, a girl here. A uh, puella or a puer could refer to somebody in their 20s even, uh, but it's probably implying more of a teenager, right? And he's this old sculptor dude. So it's a little bit weird. Not weird from the ancient perspective, but from our modern perspective. All right, now this next story has some even kind of creepier aspects to it. Um, this is a Roman legend. It's, it's probably based in some type of historical fact. How much fact there is in it, it's a little hard to tell. Um, so, the title character, Virginia, uh, Virginia, she's the daughter of Virginius. Virginius vir Romanus fuit. Virginius was a Roman man. Qui pulcram filiam habebat, who had a beautiful daughter. Nomine Virginiam by the name Virginia, quam valde amabat, which he loved very much, or whom he loved very much. Ipse quoque a filia sua amabatur. He also himself was loved by his daughter. Olem, once or once upon a time, per dum per vias ambulant, while they were walking through the roads, vir malus at dives, a um, bad but wealthy man, Nomine Claudius, by the name Claudius, qui magnam pecuniam multosque servos habebat, who had big money and many slaves, eos vidit, saw them, that is to say, saw Virginia and her father. Claudius, quam quam diwe serat, although he was a rich man, tamen virginio invidebat, nevertheless envied Virginius. Quod eum laetum esse, atque pulcram filam habere videbat, because he saw that he was happy, laetum esse, and he had, habere, a beautiful daughter, pulcram filam. Quod e causa, for which reason? Now that's a little bit like, um, it has the same force as ergo or igitur, therefore, but it literally is for which reason. Concilium eum rapiendi ex cogitavit. He thought up a plan of snatching her, kidnapping her, rapiendi. Vocavit igitur servum. Therefore he called his slave. Et vides ne inquit virginiam pulcram ilam virginim. Do you see, he says, Virginia, that beautiful unmarried woman? Cui servus ita domine inquit. To whom the slave says, 
Yes, master. Wideo, I see. Mihi quoque pulcherima videtur esse. To me also she seems to be most beautiful. Claudius igitur, Claudius therefore, puellum raptam ad se duci usit, dikens. Now here we need to unwrap the grammar. Raptam is a perfect participle, having been captured or kidnapped. Duki is a passive infinitive to be taken, to be led. So literally we have, therefore, Claudius ordered, use it, the girl, Puelam, having been snatched, having been kidnapped, Raptam, to be led, Duki, to him. Now, I just want to explain the grammar there. That's very normal to do that that way in Latin. In English, we would say ordered to kidnap the girl and bring her to him, right? We would just have two infinitives in a row linked by an and. Okay, Dickens saying, Cure, run, atque puelam raptam ad me statem duc, and bring back the kidnapped girl to me immediately. And again, we would probably say, and kidnap the girl and bring her to me. Servus imperata domini statem fecit. The slave immediately did the commands of his master. Puella rapta, the kidnapped girl, clamabat, shouted out. Et servum rabat, and she begged the slave, qui tamen eus vocem adire non videbatur, who nevertheless did not seem to hear her voice. Quam quam multi and via ambulabant, although many people were walking in the road, nemo adjuandum cucurit, no one ran up to help. Nam omnes Claudium temebat, for they all feared Claudius. Cuius saevissimum servum bene no virant, whose most savage slave they well recognized. Okay, so this is happening a, a bit later than the beginning of the story. What happens is here Virginia was walking by herself down the road and the slave who had previously been told to plot and kidnap her by evil Claudius um, happens to see the girl by herself and then the passers-by in the streets don't do anything. Why? Because the slave they recognize to be the slave of Claudius and they know Claudius is powerful and rich. Mm hmm. Unfortunately, a lot of times people, even still today, are not brave when they should be to stand up for others in need. Neque quisquam paratus erat, nor uh, was anyone ready, prepared, ad moriendum to die, pro Virginia for Virginia. Patri vero filam raptam esse nun teaverunt, but they reported that the daughter had been uh, kidnapped, stolen, raptam esse, to her father, Patri. Qui statem ad Claudium Acadens, who immediately approaching Claudius, clamavit, shouted, O oh, Claudii, quid est hoc? O oh, Claudius, what is this? Quomodo filiam meam rapre ausus est? How have you dared to kidnap my daughter? Nullum enem malum tibi <clears throat> feci, for I have done nothing bad to you. Et filia mea virgo proba est, and my daughter is a decent or good maiden, right? Virgo means specifically an unmarried woman. So proba means good in the sense of good character. So his argument is, I haven't done anything wrong to you, my daughter is a good, upstanding individual. Why would you shame her and my family this way? Rede igitur, therefore return. Statimeam, her immediately. Si vir es bonus, if you are a good man. Now, of course, we already know he's not a good man. So, unfortunately for Virginius, this is appeal to his shreds of morality just doesn't work. Claudius Altim redains. Claudius, however, laughing, says, inquit, O oh, Virgini, O oh, Virginius, ipse divitissimus sum, I myself am very rich. Tu Altim pauper, you, however, poor, you're poor man. Ego multo servos habeo, qui me defendere poterunt, sine cesiarit. 
two, where rho nullus. So I have many slaves who will be able, poterent, to defend me, uh, defendere me, if it will be necessary. But you have nullos, none of them, no slaves. Okay, so he's basically like, I've got a slave army that can just take you out, so don't even try to attack me, dude. You're not getting your daughter back. I just stole her from you, and I'm rich and powerful, so deal with it. Abi stulte senex. Go away, you stupid old man. Te anem contemno, for I despise you. Nequec lamores tuos curro. Nor do I care for, care about your shouts. So you can shout all you want, it's not going to do anything. Quibus superbissimis verbis auditis, with which most haughty words having been heard. Uh, we would probably say with these most haughty words having been heard, or even switch it to a different structure and say having heard these, or when he heard these very haughty words. Um, but in Latin, literally, we have the ablative, um, so that's why I say with, and then the auditis means having been heard, because uh, it's a passive, um, perfect participle. So with which, very haughty words having been heard, Virginius, gladio sub palio occultato, with his sword hidden underneath his cloak, ad filam suam accessit, he approached his daughter, his own daughter. Dickens Claudio, saying to Claudius, se ultimum eam complecte vele, that he wanted, vele, to embrace, to hug, complecti, her a last time. Ooh. Gladium vero in corpus eius mersit, atque interfecit. But he submerged, he sunk his sword into her body and killed her. This is the horrible part, right? Um, but it's totally indicative of Roman culture in this early kind of Roman Republic period, which we're talking about. So to save the honor of the family, you can't get your daughter back, but the guy is going to have his way with her. She's going to be his slave. He's going to defile her and all of this. So to save the family honor, weirdo Roman dude, Virginius, decides to just kill his daughter. That way the rich guy can't have her. It's a twisted story, but it tells us something about what Roman life could have been like at this point in the early Republic. Uh, certainly a lot of misogyny. Women didn't have power. They weren't respected. And there was a lot of feelings of, you know, family honor and so on. And, you know, unfortunately, this may well have actually happened. It seems totally in line with some of the other stories we hear from this early period of Roman history. Dum igitur puella humi in sanguine suo yaket, while therefore the girl was lying in her own blood, in sanguine suo, on the ground, humi. Uh, Virginius shouted, clamavit Virginius, Filia mea num quam anquila tua erit. My daughter will never be your slave woman. Quam quam tu multos eros abes, ego nulos. Although you have many slaves and I none. So it's like, I don't care, I'm not wealthy, I don't have these people to attack you, but guess what? You didn't expect it, but I just stole my daughter back from you by killing her. Again, twisted logic here, um, but unfortunately indicative of kind of some cruelty of Roman culture at this point, some of the twisted notions they had of familial honor and so on. Cum primum autem Romani Virginia mortuam vederunt. When first, however, the Romans saw Virginia dead, atque totam rem ut facta errat adiverunt, and they heard the whole thing, uh, how it had happened, as it had happened, Claudium comprehensum ad mortem miti userunt. They ordered Claudius, uh, having been caught, comprehensum, to be sent to death. All right, so there's a little bit of the light at the end of the tunnel there. At least the bad guy does get um, condemned in the end, but not before poor Virginia, um, who is, or Virginia, to use the English pronunciation, not before poor girl Virginia ends up dying, and it's very sad, killed by the hands of her own father. 
All right, well, that ends the second story. I think we will finish the others in another um, video lesson after this. I hope you learned a few things there. Walete. <laughs>